know at Nine Honey, we love the royal family. Yes. We are obsessed with the royals. But there is a bit of a he said, she said divide in that I feel like the females in the royal family get a pretty rough trot and the men get off scot-free. For example. Here we go. We've got Harry. He can, like, wear a Nazi uniform to a costume party, gets a little bit of press, but he's not hated. Meghan basically is the most hated woman in the UK for what? Nothing. She, she married the guy that she loved. I think it's a little bit of a double standard. What do you think? I disagree. I think that there is equal scrutiny placed on all royals and some of them receive a lot of love from the general public, some of them don't. I mean, look at, you, you give the example of, of Harry and yeah. Meghan. So Harry's not got off scot-free. Harry didn't get off scot-free for the Nazi uniform, which can I just point out was 20 years ago. It was 20 it years ago. It was front page news for weeks on end. He had to apologise over it. Harry has not dodged the bullet over the whole Mexit thing, even though, yeah, yes, it was named Mexit after I Meghan know, and so not Harry. I know, so it was Harry. blamed on Meghan, though. It was like Harry didn't even have a say in it. And I'm sure that he was 50-50 in that discussion. Yeah, no, no doubt. And look, um, my wife still reminds me that when the news came through that these two were getting engaged, that I said, this is not going to end well. And she goes, why? And I said, because... You can't take a girl from Hollywood and put her in the royal family and think that everything's going to be the same. It's not. I mean, everyone remembers the times when Diana was under incredible scrutiny, scrutiny and criticism. They tend to forget the times when Prince Charles was the same and the general well, when, public when he absolutely got cheating with Camilla. detested Prince yeah. Charles. Uh, she's barely got a, a clean look in Camilla Parker Bowles. Yeah. So, Interestingly, look, when I talk to my friends who work over in London and interview the royals, Camilla's one of their favourites. Mm. Apparently, she is so lovely. She chats to the media. She makes time for them. Interesting that that perception hasn't really come out there and as look, much. Now that I think about it, with Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and she, Prince Philip, by the way, I love the Queen. I love the love Queen. Love the Queen. When you think about those two, imagine if... Queen Elizabeth had said all the controversial things that the Prince Philip has said. <laughs> no. And can you imagine the way that we would feel about oh, the no. Queen? We, there would not Whereas be as much Whereas with love. Prince Philip, we kind of like, go, no. oh, the crazy old boy, what's he said this time? <laughs> no. So expected. maybe, well, it, maybe you might Andrew. be onto something. I mean, with the allegations against oh, Andrew, God, let's not talk yes, about that has Andrew. had huge issues in that it's been in the media, but kind of was pushed to the side so that, that more hate could be poured onto Meghan. Mm. Well, when you think about it, Fergie was on the outer of yeah. the royal family because she had a toe sucked. Um, you suck one toe. I know. <laughs> Whereas Andrew was on yeah. a place that labelled Pedophile Island. Yeah. And he claims that he's completely innocent, of course, of all of those mm. allegations. But, you know, involved with Jeffrey Epstein, yeah. even after Epstein had been accused and found to be someone of of ill repute, so yeah, you're right. Okay, final, uh, final I find question. myself uh, what? I'm not going to interrupt. a degree of agreement with you. A Can degree. Can we make sure that we press record on this segment? <laughs> this is going to be the one I watch over and over. If you want more royal stories, make sure you go to 9honey.com.au. And now that he's been nice to me, you should tune into 2GB with Ben Fordham. Thanks, princess. <laughs> Bit of a juicy one. So, I love a juicy one. according to a study done by the University of California, 67% of hetero married couples have cheated or would cheat. Now, the divorce rate is not that high, so there's a lot of cheating going on. But this is the juicy bit. Women judge other women for, for cheating more than they judge the men. So they would rather blame the other woman then blame their husband. Yes, yes, What do you reckon? Yes. I think there's probably some truth to that. I think that's maybe because women would expect it more of a man and they've got lower expectations of a man thinking, I know what blokes are like, a lot of blokes can't help themselves, but I expect better out of you mm -hmm. because of the womanhood, because of the sisterhood. sisterhood. So I wonder whether there's a bit of judgment going on there. But I, I don't believe that women are judged any more harshly than men in the average cheating scandal. If it was a group of friends and 
the wife cheated on the bloke and you know both of them equally. Mm. With the I don't think the group kind of favours the... Doesn't favour anyone. The no. man, no. I think if there's a cheating scandal in, a, in an office or a group or yeah. whatever, I think the, the cheats are the ones who go under the bus. But, but I do think that there might be some truth to the idea that, that women are more likely to judge another woman more yeah. harshly for getting involved in something like that. And maybe they're more inclined to give a pass mark yeah, to the bloke. Yeah, I think that I was, when I was thinking about it, I thought it's probably also you've got an emotional attachment to your partner and the other woman is a stranger. So yeah. it's much easier to hate a stranger than to, you know, pour all of your well, anger into the Well, there's been a, a story in rugby league involving mm. a couple who are about to get married. Yep. So this guy is about to get married to this girl and the best man is over at their place. The best man is over visiting. They're not married yet, but they're about to get married. And just before lights out, the wife accuses the about to be husband of being unfaithful. Mm. So there's an argument. The about to be husband goes to bed. He wakes up at 4.30 in the morning and she's kissing his soon to be best man. Mm. Now, what do you do about the wedding there? You know, pull it off. She's, like is... He then, the husband-to-be just then blew up and smashed his yeah. fist in a window and whatever, which led to the police being called. Yeah. It's now in court. And the fiancé, female, has turned up to support her fiancé, male, in court. Mm. But I'm just intrigued about what happens with a wedding. I mean, do you say to the best man, listen, mate, you were kissing my about-to-be wife in my home at 4.30 in the morning. You can't be best man anymore. Let's just... Or is the argument back at him, well, hang on a moment, mate. She was arguing with you hours earlier because you have allegedly been unfaithful to her. You don't want the bride to be the something borrowed. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think the great lesson here is, and this is for young players. Can I give a tip to young players who are watching at the moment? I know the demographic of he said, she said spans right across all Obviously. different age groups. But to younger players, lean in for a moment. And let me give you a few tips from Uncle Ben. <laughs> If you really want to get involved in this kind of business, mm -hmm. get it out of your system. Okay? When you're single. When you're single. Get it out of your system. Go nuts. Play the field. My grandmother Vera used to say to me, if I had a girlfriend when I was in my late teens, early mm -hmm. 20s, I said, oh, Nan, I want to introduce you to my girlfriend. She goes, what do you need a girlfriend for? You need to be out there playing the field. And I thought, Vera, so you know, like, but you know what? There's an argument to that. Yeah, if you've do got, all and of that. don't get me wrong, there is an element in all of us, I think, yeah. Shelley, of wanting to love and wanting to be loved. So I would just encourage people, particularly younger people, get that out of your system yeah. and don't fall into the trap of going, oh, you know what? I've got to settle down now. No, you don't have to settle down now. Yeah. And if you're a danger of ruining that relationship later on because you feel like you haven't experienced the things you want to experience in life, don't lock in now. 100%. Go out and play the field. I also think you need to actually have the conversation with your partner before the engagement, before the wedding. About what? On your stance on cheating. Like some people... Well, sorry, what, 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 par well, what partnerships have got a, no, oh, she'll be right, mate? approach to cheating unless I it's an open have, relationship. No, no, it's certainly not an open relationship, but it was that we would go to counselling and sort it out, whereas my husband and I have the zero tolerance. Yeah. You cheat, it's over that day. No, no way of coming back from it. Oh, so that mate. puts the pressure on it, but that makes it that important. And yeah. if we both completely agree with that, no grey area. I can't imagine going to counselling to go, oh, I did the wrong thing and I, you know, I think... You're right. I think that mm. there's a, a strong likelihood in most relationships. Mind you, we've got a no divorce policy in our relationship. So you've got to work through it. That might be a um, conversation for another day. Mm. But I'm just strong of the belief that if you want to do that, go and do it when you're younger, when you've got the freedom to be able to do it. And it's one of the great things about being single. You've got that stage of your life where you don't have the commitments don't that you have commit. to do it. Don't commit. Have Go nuts. some fun. Throw it around. <laughs> Love it. If Love you it. want to see more <laughs> stories like this, go to 9honey.com.au. And if you want to hear about the no divorce story, <laughs> then tune in to 2GB Breakfast with Ben Ford. That's a conversation for another day. <laughs>